Wait, he didn't actually leave. We get him. Nice. Oh, and now he's talking some smack, huh? Nice. Good job, Lucian. Very nice. He's calling me trash. That's hilarious. Alright, well, now we have two points in our E. We definitely kill him here if I get into range. Oop. <laughs> uh, good times, man. Good times. Alright, what's up? What's going on, guys? Captain Monk here. Welcome back for some more League of Legends. In today's game, we're playing some Wukong with the rework here in the top lane, actually. Gonna try not exactly a tank build, more of a bruiser fighter build, but with the Sunfire in mind. We are rocking the Volcanic skin, and the Sunfire cape did get some buffs. I don't actually know the specifics of the buffs, but people have been complaining about it nonstop. And when people complain about things being broken, usually that's enough to convince me. Uh, just knowing what I know about the Sunfire cape... And what it's been in the past, I can guess that the change they made is they made it so that it does more damage based upon your bonus HP. I haven't seen that before. So that looks, see that looks pretty cool. Seems like it might be broken. You're awesome, Captain Monk. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, I did make one crucial error, you guys. Actually, I mean, I'll take some credit. It's probably my fault in some way, shape, or form. But the PB wouldn't change my runes. So I'm going to electrocute when I definitely did not mean to. So that kind of blows. What are we against? Oh, Trundle. Yikes. Okay, we're against the Trundle, guys. Like... Immediate door and shield. Like, I hate to be a, you know, big bitch, but if I had Conqueror, maybe I could be a little bit more confident because with Conqueror, uh, I'm not going to blow this guy up even with Electric Q, right? So with Conqueror, at least I can kind of fight him to the death to match his Conqueror and the fact that he's a duelist. That's exactly what Trundle would be if I had to describe him like a tanky duelist. But his Wukong's not exactly that, and blowing him up with Electric Q's probably not going to happen. Again, with Conqueror, maybe I'd go Dorn's Blade and sustain through his sustain and see who wins in the end. I have Ignite, so I could reduce his healing and make it work, but yeah. With Electrocute, blowing him up isn't really going to work because he's very sustain heavy. So, we're, what we're going to do, guys, is we're just going to... Wait, he definitely took some damage there. That's actually very good. I can get the Electrocute off. And this guy's making a lot of mistakes right here, actually. So many mistakes. Keep making mistakes, boy. Keep doing it. And... There it is. It cost me everything, but I knew exactly what I need to do to make that work. Even if he flashed, because our Nimbus Strike is a targeted spell, I knew it would still connect. My auto attack can't be avoided once I begin it, and the Nimbus Strike pretty much always guarantees an auto attack. The Ignite was going to do anything I was not going to be able to do myself. So you can see that worked out very nicely. And I'm just going to shove this as quick as I can, get all the minions pinned on his turret, because he might get them all. But I'm thinking he probably won't, and either way, it gives me the time I need to go back to base. And whoops, I just accidentally whacked my headphone cable. I was going to say awkward, but you guys can't actually tell the difference. Only I can, because I unplugged my headphones. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead here and get ourselves the... Oh yeah, right, we're going Sunfire. <laughs> I talked about it, and yet I'm forgetting what I'm doing already. I'm actually going to go Cloth Armor here, I think. And a Long Sword and two potions. Or one potion, because math. Uh, <laughs> anyway guys, if you guys enjoyed the video here so far, make sure to drop that rate on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, all that good stuff. I would really appreciate it. I'll go ahead and briefly explain my thought process behind these items. Firstly, I just think Cloth Armor is going to be really good against Trundle since <laughs> I think we killed him there because he made a mistake. Not because we're going to keep killing him all game long. Maybe I'm wrong, but in case I'm not wrong, uh, Cloth Armor will just make this a lot more manageable. Because I think that's the way this matchup is going to go. It's because of how Trundle is designed and how Wukong is designed. Wukong could be cheesy, like he just was there. But generally speaking, he loses this matchup. So Cloth Armor will make it less bad. The Long Sword will make it easier for me to last hit. And frankly, I'm not going to roam yet, so I don't need boots. Getting back to lane a little bit faster is nice, but that's not enough for me to justify buying boots. And I would go double longsword, but I want to start getting tanky relatively early. And HP was just too expensive for me to get anything else. So that's why I didn't get the ruby crystal. Oh, that was some good CSing right there. Got all of them. It's too bad, though, I ran, I'm running the wrong runes. Um, one thing I'm kind of doing with some of these videos is I'm making them double features. So what I might do is I might make this one a double feature and show this build again, but with Conqueror. We'll see, though. We'll see. Yeah, I did a double feature for the uh, sustain top lane build video because I wanted to show what happens when your team's good and when your team's not so good. <laughs> but I also wanted to uh, show myself not losing with it. Spoilers for those of you who haven't seen that episode. Uh, anyway, I'm going to fight this guy again relatively soon here because my siege minion's hitting him. Get a double Q off with the decoy. But I'm not going to fight him for extended trades here because he wins those and I have all cooldowns and I already have a I have electrocute rather than conquer. I'd go for extended trades against him 
more often if I had Conquer. But in this kind of matchup where I have Electrocute, yeah. Do what I'm doing. It's very, very good. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure I have 5 before he hits 5. So when I get 5 here, I'm going to try and all-in him with Ignite. And I might be able to kill him if I use my decoy for its dash. But there is a, I wouldn't say bug necessarily, but a accidental change. Like a ninja nerf, as we would call it, for Wukong. Wow, this guy's just getting his ass kicked. What you doing, boy? I don't think I get him here. No, I totally do. Holy crap, this guy's <laughs> making so many mistakes. I thought that pillar would actually slow me too much. Very nice. Yeah, worst case scenario there, I was actually definitely going to get him. Because I could just Nimbus to a minion, then ignite him. So yeah, good stuff. But yeah, the ninja nerf, you guys, that they have on Wukong right now for the PB, which is really, I think, an accident, because it's not written anywhere as like a note, on, like by Riot August or anything. Like, it seems like it's by accident. They took away the decoy's spin going over walls. You don't believe me, I'm going to show you right now. Like, I'm going to show, like, this wall is thin as crap. Like, every champion that can go over walls can go over this wall. And watch what happens here. Like, they, they fucked it. Like, I can't go over walls. And it's not, it's not written anywhere. Like, I think they actually did this by accident. And I'm not saying, like, Riot's a bunch of monkeys who can't code. But, like, how much do you have to mess up to... Oh, fuck, I missed the Siege Minion. Speaking of messing up. <laughs> I was trying to perfectly farm them all. Oops. But, yeah, I don't know how they pooched that, man. I, I don't think it's intentional. I think they'll put the wall thing back. Because they've gone back and forth on that plenty enough as is. So, I think that the decision's been made to launch this onto live servers with the wall thing. So... I think it's an accident, but I don't know. I just wanted to talk about that since I won't be able to go over walls in today's video. Uh, anyway, we're going to go back to base here. Not really much to do left in the lane anymore since I'm out of mana. And he is pushing for me, which is good. Instead of freezing. If he was smart, he'd be freezing right here because he's losing pretty hard. So yeah, we'll go Ninja Tabby here. I hate to skip the Sunfire Cape so early. I will get the Ruby Crystal though. But I think Ninja Tabby against Trundle is just so good because he's so auto attack based. And I'll get a control word here. I think one potion in my inventory is fine since we have uh, not a ton of sustain by any means. We actually have none, but your passive does give you some. So that's that. Speaking of which, changes to Wukong. I'm pretty sure these changes don't ship with the Wukong rework, but I want to talk about them anyway because they're already planning ahead before they even launch the Wukong rework, which the last video that I posted, the sustain one, was what they said was going to be the state of the Wukong rework when it gets launched. So if you're looking for what's going to be like when you actually play as them on live servers, watch that video and pinch the details. But these details for where they're going to take it from there are the passive can only stack up 10 times, or sorry, 8 times instead of 10. It's 8 now. But the stacks give you a bigger percentage of armor. It used to be 100, then they made it 50. For live servers, it's 50. And now they made it 62.5, so just a little bit better. But it doesn't stack to being as much because it's only 8 stacks now instead of 10. Uh, the Q, they made the mana cost 40 at all ranks, like it is on live servers. The rework was scaling from 30 to 50. Now it's just 40 at all ranks. So I kind of think that's fine, honestly. I don't think that's a problem. Especially since they made the uh, E mana cost way lower at all ranks, which is great. And they made the attack speed stronger. So Bruiser Wukong and attack speed and all that stuff is better for them. Look at the damage we're hitting this guy with. I'm really liking the combo of dashing in and using your W's as second kind of gap closer, even though you're already gap close with your E, you just kind of lead them ahead with your W, and then you get a double Q off if they stand still. Also, this guy's very one-shottable if I have my W here. I just need a moment. What's he doing? Does he know I'm here? I don't think so. We got him. Beautiful. So yeah, I just want to surprise him from stealth like that. Drop the Ignite on him and make sure even if he ulted, he wouldn't be able to survive my damage output. Since not only does the Ignite reduce his healing and burn him out, but it also reduces the instant HP he gets from his ultimate. Because it is a form of healing. So he would be very, very low even if he ulted there. And that enables me to do a hell of a whole lot. Hi, Mord. What's up, buddy? Um, this guy's gonna die if he keeps fighting me. Trying to bait him just enough, but I don't have enough mana to really kill him here. Oh, who am I kidding? I do. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can't even be mad, dude. I can't even be mad about that. I really can't. Because I knew he was going to ult me. I knew he was going to get a tank here. Did I think he was going to regen off of potions faster than my auto attacks could damage him? <laughs> No. No, that did not cross my mind. I apologize. Whatever. Bammy Cinder. He wants to burn me out with his red smite and his bammies. I'll do the same. Who can play at that game? 
And uh, let's also turn this into a Tiamat here. The Tiamat is just a very core item on Wukong, no matter what you're doing. I think it's just necessary. Again, even if you're playing AP, Tiamat can help you. But if you're playing AP and you're sick, sticking true to your word of playing AP, then you can't get Tiamat. But if you're going like hybrid Wukong, a Tiamat wouldn't be a bad thing to grab. Yeah, because that wave clear extra it gives you, that the AoE it provides is just amazing. An extra uh, reset mechanics you can do, like auto attack, Tiamat, Q resets. Oh, very nice pillar! That's a mechanic you could do with Trundle, as you saw there. Uh, I was going to talk about that at some point, but I wanted to have a prime example of it to make it easier to understand how effective that can be. Yeah. And you're going to stand all the way over here? That's right. You better cancel that recall. Oh, can I get it? Oh yeah, we got him. So I'm going to shove really fast here because I can tell he wants to recall. And I want to give him incentive to stay. If he stays and clears the wave, I roam. And if he doesn't stay and clear the wave, then I get tower plating. Which is good. It's very good, yes. Can I get this turret plating? No, I can't. Alright, maxing that E some more. Damage output on it is just too good to pass up. Oops. Dang, I was really hoping to hit him there and just, you know, show my mean business without taking a tower shot. Couldn't quite do so, but that's not a big deal. Uh, mid is missing though, so I'm kind of cautious here of Lux. I'm also going to get these berries. I wasn't actually planning on getting the berries, but they're here. And they definitely help me out plenty. Now, I want to keep beating on Trundle, but honestly, it doesn't really benefit me that much to do that anymore unless I get tower. Whereas you can see what's happening in bottom lane. They're very extended. If I shove mid here, that wave's going to push, so Lux has to clear that, which just slows her down just that small little bit more and gives me free money. And now look at this opportunity. Now, because I can't go over walls with my W, this situation, in a way, kind of sucks. But wait, you're just walking into me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good one, Lux. Oh, hi. I think he knows like he can't fight me because Talon's here. Let's go ahead and use the double ultimate here. And there it is. I don't really want to overstay my welcome here on this one. Gotta be smart about this. The Jin W missed. If it hit though, that'd been so good. Wait, Lux is actually very killable here. Yes, beautiful. Uh oh. Um, if I can go over walls, <laughs> that'd be the way out right now, but I can't. I'd love to try though. <laughs> Just it's, uh, like look at this, you guys. This tiny little thin wall can't do it. Can't be done. Like, what happened, Riot? What happened? I don't understand. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Got the chain vest. Oh, wait, it's Captain Monk. Yeah, it's me, dude. It's me. He's back. I was never really gone, honestly. I'm just in the midst of pursuing bigger things than playing a video game. <laughs> I hate to be so blunt about it. I don't mean to, like, disrespect anybody who does play League, like, all the time. But you know what? I've been doing it for six years. And... Not to say I'm sick of it, it's just there's more to life than playing League, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but like, there really is. Like, even if I was to have, like, gone pro and made, like, a boatload of money, like, I'd probably still want more out of life. So knowing that, I'm not gonna kill myself playing this game more than I should and destroy, like, my body and stuff, you know, eyesight and hunching in a chair for hours on end. Like, I don't mind doing it just enough to, like, do what it is I enjoy doing, which is what I'm doing, right? But, like... There's, you know, there's music and there's, you know, movies and there's, you know, sports and there's romance and, you know, outdoor activities. Like, there's more to life than playing League of Legends, dude. Sorry. <laughs> all this to say, though, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get more experience with all of those things so that I can actually bring it to the channel comfortably, right? I mean, this channel I might keep specifically for League Forever, but I think building a network of channels that all kind of work in unison for different purposes and different focuses that are all kind of tied together because they're all mine. That's kind of the idea. So I know this guy just did this, but I don't know if he's doing the Krugs nope. or the Raptors or what. But this Lux is very flankable, I think. But I probably should return top lane, shouldn't I? Yeah. Because Talon's backing off. The wave's on my tower. I probably was making a waste of time in uh, leaving the lane, actually. But the big thing that you want to, I want to point out is I did get this ward down, and that's very good. Hello. What's up, guy? I never really truly want to all-in the Trundle when I have no Ignite. The Ignite is really what enables me to win this matchup more than anything else. Without it, it's pretty tough for me to do exactly what I want to do against this guy. Because if I go for the all-in, it could be great. Or he can just press R. <laughs> right? And that just kind of nullifies what I'm looking to do. I'm also kind of hoping that by pressuring consistently like this, I'll get him to step out at some point from thinking I'm just in their jungle rather than actually being in the lane. 
Or maybe I'll get Mordekaiser to come up and I can kill one of them, then get away, because I'm Wukong and I got Jukes. Alright, I don't have level 11, so my ultimate's kind of weak here, but my Ignite is almost up. So I'm going to look for it. Get a double Q off here. He used his ult, I think. There's the Ignite, though. Okay, I don't think I actually needed to flash R there. I think the Ignite was going to get him. I was getting kind of deceived, because I think he has that rune that gives him a magic damage shield. Which is really weird, I don't know why he's running that. But I saw that in his health bar, and I was... Honestly, at the time, not thinking through the fact that that's a match damage shield and doesn't matter. So, whoops. I thought it was his health bar. Damn colorblindness. I'm not actually colorblind, but every now and again. Like, you know how people who are not dyslexic sometimes will experience dyslexia? Where they kind of read things in reverse? But they're not actually dyslexic, they just kind of <laughs> pooch the gooch and saw things backwards. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's like me with colors. I'm aware of every single color I can see them all. But sometimes I kind of forget what their significance is. Like a blue health bar for an enemy is a magic damage shield. But it's in the place where health should be. So I'm like, yo, is that health? What What is that? Anyway, this will be the first tower of the match. Booyah. I don't think we got all the maximum turret plating we could have gotten this game. But frankly, I'm not so worried about it. So okay, let's go back to base here. Finish up that Sunfire Cape. So once again, you guys, this will give us a nice amount of burn. And uh, once every 12 seconds, your next immobilizing spell. Bonus magic damage and reels a Fire Nova. I did not read all of that. That seems pretty cool. So if I, I guess if I was to use my alt, it's an immobilizing spell. And that could be very, very good for that sort of thing. I think my next item here, I want to go for the Sterics Gauge. I want to go for a bit of, like again, like a bruiser sort of tank build. Maybe a fighter build. And I think Sterix is great for that, because then I can go full, full on Kamikaze into their team and just be so tanky that they can't handle me, which is great. And don't be wrong, you know, I'm not going to say any of these builds I'm doing are bad necessarily. I'm trying to make them all good with specific niches in mind. But I think this one's probably better than the sustain one if I had to be, uh, I guess, more objective about like what's good and what's bad. This one minion just snuck off. Like, I don't get how it got all this way without just being like, oh, hey, there's a monkey here hitting my my friends. Like, why don't I help my friends fight him? And instead decided to go all the way down here to fight my other minions. <laughs> Dang minion logic. I'm talking a lot of nonsense today, aren't I? <laughs> that's kind of what I do a lot of the time. Ironically, like, that's what, like, I don't know. I think, in a way, maybe keeps people coming back is the fact that I can make perfect sense or I can make absolutely zero sense and still make be entertaining. I don't know if that was why you watch or not, but I've been told that a few times by a few different viewers. They're like, dude, like you make so much sense when you're talking numbers and logic in League of Legends, but every now and again you go on these like rants where you're just like talking bullshit and it's entertaining as fuck because it doesn't make sense, but your logic is sound. And I'm like, hell yeah. All right, so I can see Lux kind of approaching me here. I'm hoping I can just... Surprise Goon Squatter. We'll see. Maybe she's staying mid. Okay, they definitely know I'm here. Why'd you guys have to ruin my charade? Why are you like this? See, look at this. I'm tanky as fuck, dude. But where's team? No, please. Alright, yeah. I was trying to give my teammates time to save me. Right, Master Yi showed up. Uh, Zoe just got here, a little bit late, but hey, Master Yi got moored, and, you know, he's gonna die, so it's a two for one for their team, which is obviously not good, but all in all, it could've been worse. But yeah, just bad timing for me to be sitting on a ward, apparently. We'll just get the, uh, big axe here towards that Sterics. Oh, Jin will survive, nice. Very nice, over the wall. Can Zoe get it? Uh, too much binding. Oh, but Talon, he's got it. Can he, why? Okay, he's... <laughs> I mean, I, I can't blame him, actually. He's making a smart move trying to save his teammates, but it's not actually going to lead to anything. He totally could have just, like, chased down Ezreal there. Ezreal was free low. Anyway, I'm going to grab the red buff here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. Our Master Yi might be salty with me about it. I'm just going to ask him. Can I red? Worst case scenario, he says no, and he comes over and takes it. I guess. Okay. Very nice, thank you. Thank you, Dildo Baggins. <laughs> but dude, like, look at this. Why Why can't my W go over this wall? Right? Like, what happened? Maybe I was leashing. Show me 
the path. Hi, Lulu. Uh, I can't get that word. So yeah, while I want to be top lane right now, I actually want to be bottom lane. Because killing Trundle over and over again at this point just takes too long. I would really like to surprise attack the, the Ezreal and the Lulu and them. I'm looking for an opportunity here. I think I could actually totally wombo this Ezreal. I just want Lulu to step just a little bit away so that she doesn't instantly stop me from killing him. Like, especially if she backs here. Huge window of opportunity. But I don't think Ezreal's going to farm anymore. I think he's backing off. Oh, hi, Mord. Okay, well, let's just drop a ward and clear the wave. Very common split push tactic is, of course, to get into these brushes and then just wait for them to come clear the wave. So let's see if I can do that after this wave. Alright, and team's killing Trundle anyway, so that's good. Oh, nice miss there, boy. Alright, let's come mid here. I'm gonna try and, uh... Maybe not cut off the Lulu, but cut off the Mord, possibly. Oh yeah, he's asleep. Oh, hi. Hmm. I'm very tanky, so I can last quite a while, but... I kind of fucked up there and wasn't able to really take out the Lulu as I had anticipated being able to. I'm just kind of regen right now with that red, but I've got the rich out still, so we can protect it, get it some tower damage. Oh, good try on the snipe. I think we just walk in and get the turret here. Because like Ezreal's not gonna like it, but once it's dead, he can't do nothing about it. Beautiful. Right, we got Trumble here, he's gonna pillar us, slow us down, but we can just play this slow. If he overcommitted there, I was gonna turn it and ignite him, so he's doomed to die. Uh, Dragon's pretty soon, but our team's doing a pretty good job of controlling those. So I'm gonna try and get their red if it's here. It ain't. But where's where's their team at? I think Talon's thinking like I am. Oh no. Um, I want this wave. I want my wave. Let's see how let's go get this. If their team's going for the dragon here, I'm actually setting my team up for failure by not being there. But I think our team is actually clever enough to stall if their team's collapsing, which they definitely are. I'm on the way. Stall M for me. Sorry for not being there. This is my fault. I should be here. So should Talon, though, to be honest. We're both kind of messing our team up by not being there. But our team seems to be doing a decent job of keeping it in there. By pushing this wave, though, is being very proactive. Because you can see the dragon's not being hit yet, so getting that wave pushing just makes it tougher them to defend stuff. Also, I need 5 seconds for my R, so I'm just gonna be patient. It's a dragon status, so it's full health. Ouch. I don't really want to go first if I don't have to. But I kind of do have to, so I'm going to go for it. I just got to find the opportunity. Okay, we didn't get the dragon. Can I get R off again, please? Yep. All right, speed buff. Can I not die to Ezreal? Block for me, Jin. Cool, just kill him. Get him out of my face. Nice, okay. Jin's still strong. I'm just going to stand by him, keep him safe in case Mord fights. Nah, we're okay. That went pretty well, all things considered. Blowing up Lulu might seem like super strange, by the way, but it's because she's the only person I could reach within my stealth range and surprise that was squishy. And if I can stop her from ulting one of her allies, that's a good thing. That's 100% a good thing, right? Getting her to ult herself is great because she's not actually worth much. So that worked out really well. Uh, next item, next item. Hmm, I need some CDR. I'm gonna get the Black Cleaver. That's one thing this build kind of lacks is it doesn't have any CDR. But, uh, we're making it work. That we are. If I had teleport, I'd be trying to set up split pushes bottom lane. So I could pop their Ezreal and pop their Lulu and stuff like that. But their team is... Or actually, I'm running Ignite. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm running Volcanic Wukong Sunfire Cave. Like, of course I'm going to run Ignite. You know, I'm all about those themes and stuff, right? It's just kind of how it has to go. I'm pretty sure I can mess this guy up. Can't quite do all that I was looking for, but that's not surprising with this build. Didn't have alt either, so yeah, we pretty much weren't gonna kill him. But yeah, their team's all missing right now, except for Lulu, who's dead, of course. So I'm just gonna stand here and wait for my team to move and make moves and their team to make moves. I'm doing all that I need to right now by putting pressure on bottom lane. Uh, Lulu's is always getting flanked, so I'm gonna try and save her. It's definitely not gonna happen though, she's already dead. But Ezreal did use his shift, we saw that. It's a pretty short cooldown, but I'm still gonna ping it. My team's being flanked here, but we can flank their flank. My name's Joel. Give me that butt. And we'll get that. 
and decoy forward for a little bit of a gap closer. And Mastery will clean it all up. Flank in the flank, baby. That's what team fighting is all about. Okay, and off of that, we could honestly look for the win. I just don't know if we want to. I kind of want to kill more peoples. Yeah, we really don't need to. It's overkill. But yeah, so that's going to be the game one, I would say, of this build. Like, how much do you guys hit with Conquer? And, like, this game wasn't necessarily a stomp stomp, but, like, everyone on our team did well. Like, we are definitely going to win this game. And we will get ourselves that plus 50. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop that rating, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, all that good stuff. And I'll show you guys post-game stats, but stick around for game two. All right, as far as honoring goes, I'll give it to Dildo, Dildo Baggins. You know, cool name. And he also, of course, uh, provided us with that red buff, which was really nice of him. We uh, did have the most damage in the whole game. I'm looking at the numbers. They're very close. You can see Ezreal was actually like, what, 23 damage away from having more than me or having the same. Mass G was like another 100 beneath me and about 300 beneath me. No, not even. So yeah, it was very close in damage. I'm surprised Jin had the least, right? Our Zoe support actually had a good amount of damage. Good for her. So there's that. I think this build's pretty good. Just no CDR really hurts. So I think a Black Cleaver might be good to get instead of the Sterix at that point in the build. But uh, other than that, runes. This actually did pretty well for us, all things considered. And so did these, but I would run this with Conqueror anyway. Uh, damage taken maybe is a cool stat to see. Yeah, second most. Our Master Yi died quite a lot, actually. Wait, what? Okay, maybe he didn't die a lot. <laughs> I was thinking like that would usually be why somebody would take that much damage is because they died. But uh, maybe he just soaked a lot of damage and used his Meditate effectively. I mean, we could obviously put a hurting on this Trundle. Well, you know what it is, man? It's because in the jungle, both the junglers, right? The junglers sit there tanking damage from the jungle camps. When you're fighting minions, oftentimes you're smart enough to just let them focus each other and not you. So yeah, that's probably what that's all about. But that's game one here, guys. Stick around for game two and I'll see you in a moment. All right, what's up? What's going on, guys? Captain Monk here. Welcome back for some more League of Legends. In today's game, we're playing some more Wukong in the top lane, rocking that volcanic skin with the Sunfire build and all that fire going on with the Ignite as well. Gonna look to be a little bit tanky, but a little bit cheesy and a little bit high damage, but mostly kind of like a fighter sort of style, I would say. And we're against a Riven today's game. She's rocking a Conqueror with the Domination just like we are. So this is definitely gonna be a high intensity lane, but we have the Ignite over her. So with that in mind, I think we'll do one's blade here. I'm not as scared of a Riven as I am a Trundle, like the last game. And uh, we'll look to maybe not cheese her. I mean, if the cheese is available, like, I'm not going to say no to some cheese. But I think forcing cheese is, like, one of the worst things you can do in League. So we'll see how things uh, kind of, you know, flow and stuff. But for this match, I will mention we have the uh, Conqueror. I did kind of touch on that already. But in the previous one, we had Electrocute. And that's not what you want when you're playing this style of Wukong. I think Electrocute's good for the AP Wukong, even a Lethality Wukong, which I experimented with a little bit between games here. And I don't know, I think Lethality is still pretty decent. Like people are saying it's nerfed and it definitely is because this spell here is magic. So you're only impacting your auto attacks and your Q damage and your ultimate damage with Lethality. And I guess your decoys stuff too, whether it's your auto attacks from the decoy or the Qs from the decoy, it's all physical damage. So in a way, you could argue that Lethality is just as good, but even with all that in mind, it's definitely not as good. Mathematically speaking, your Q uh, doesn't scale like it used to for Lethality. And she's already using a Q here, so I'm just going to let her do that. Where's that last one at? There it is. Now you have no abilities. And now you're going to die. I, I have no idea, dude. I got no idea. I used Ignite there because I didn't want to have to flash if I didn't have to if she flashed to safety. Because I knew at that point she was dead. But yeah, she just decided to run it down. And that is one of the beautiful things you can do with Wukong. Is <laughs> if they make the mistake of you wasting their spell, you have a spell and they don't. So it's kind of game over. Now I saw her TP in the corner of my eye there. But I don't know what she's... There she is. What she was going to do next. I mean, if she comes into range here, I can dash at her and mess her up. But... Who knows, man. I wasn't expecting two games in a row of cheesy Wukong, but... Alright, you're not doing anything. Oh, you're doing something now, but it's too little too late, sweetie. Too little too late. <laughs> oh, hi, Lee Sin. Come on through. Come on through some for some love. Maybe she was baiting for Lee Sin and it just, just, it just did not work. I don't know, man. Plays like that make me look like I'm good or something. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the situation. I mean, I'm a decent player. I'm above average. You know, I've been diamond like five seasons in a row but diamond ain't shit dude like masters and stuff above that's where players are actually good 
you can get the diamond through pure cheese and luck, honestly. But I'm not gonna say that's how I got there. I got there from consistency. Five years of that will tell you that. But all this is to say, these players are just making mistakes. I'm not doing anything that special right now. But I do expect this Lee Sin to kind of loop around here, so I'll give Riven the opportunity to get level 2 here. And I'll get some vision down and see if we can catch this Lee Sin looking for me. He was only level 2 when he came up, right? So it wouldn't surprise me if he was working on the Crux. Maybe he's still working on him. Kind of doubt that. Yeah, they're gone. But uh, we've got some good vision in the area, so now we'll sniff him out. Now I wonder if Riven's going to step up here. Yep. Might be missing some minions for this, but... I can maybe fight her, but the truth is actually she has more minions than I do. And she has more items. But she just wasted her Q there, so let's let her use her last one. She already used her shield really early, so now I just beat on her. What's gonna happen here, Riven? You're gonna die again, that's what's gonna happen. You get so much attack speed as Wukong now, because your E has a higher attack speed duration and percentage at rank 1 and all ranks. Jeez, Wukong. Yeah, dude, I'm just so good, right? No, this Riven's just running it down. Doing him dirty like that. It's honestly at that point it's not even my fault. The Riven engaged on me. Like, look at me, dude. I'm like all the way back here. If I was tower diving her, destroying her behind her turret, that'd be one thing. She's fighting me over here. This is this is her fault. Anyway, another point to E. So now a ton of magic damage that cannot really be reduced. Because who's gonna buy a null magic mantle this early? Right? No one's buying that this early just to counter Wukong. So the Nimbus Strike damage is huge. You're going to be able to get a lot of attack speed off of that. It starts at, I think, 40%, goes up to 45 and 50. Tons of attack speed, and it lasts 5 seconds instead of, I think, 4 on live servers. So yeah, Wukong just beats on people with those auto attacks. So there's all that. I don't think I'll have time to get the turret plating. I think Riven's going to show up, maybe Lee Sin. Either way, though, I kind of want the turret plating, because it's definitely going to get taken out by the minions at the very least. And we will actually acquire it. Wow. Yeah, who knows what's going on in this game, man. But if you guys are enjoying it so far, despite how one-sided and cheesy I'm being, uh, definitely make sure to drop that rating on the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and turn on those notifications with the bell. I'm going to grab the Tiamat here alongside the Bambi Cinder. I can afford exactly my core items for this build for the early game. And I do like that. Now, who knows where Riven's at? I think she was convinced she could kill me on that third attempt. And obviously, she was wrong. I had a game earlier today that I put in the prelude for the video where I uh, took on that Lucian and he AFK'd after I killed him twice. So no spoilers because by this point you guys should have seen that, but this feels very familiar to that. But hey, maybe one of our teammates will AFK and then the game will get competitive like the game against Lucian did. I was going to use that full game, but it was a 5v4 for quite a while then we had an AFK. And the game honestly went to shit once it was 4v4. Like it wasn't entertaining, it wasn't fun. I just had to suck it up because my team didn't want to surrender when we started losing really hard. My team was really bad that game. Made it really tough for me to do anything. Although I crushed Lucian in the early. Yeah, this might just be an early surrender. We'll have to see. Because I guess you can kind of see the contrast of how Conqueror kind of functions. But it's kind of crazy that I'm able to cheese all these players early on in the game. Because Trundle should destroy Wukong and I cheesed him. And having the Ignite really helped. And against the Riven, kind of the same thing. But the Trundle, honestly, I think he made less mistakes than his Riven did. Riven just kind of stood there and let herself die. The Trundle at least tried to escape, and I just outplayed him. So yeah, I don't know, man. EVE. When the, when the Wukong rework goes live, though, you guys, you can definitely expect much more quality content from me when it comes to Wukong and all this stuff. For right now, unfortunately, this is the best I can do. I'm sitting in queues for 30 minutes trying to get games, and then I get into game, and it gets dodged repeatedly because other players didn't get Wukong, and they're salty about it because they want to try Wukong. And you can see where I'm going with all this. I think Ignite gets him here. Yeah, just barely. Just barely. It's going to alt the wave here a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah, let's go for the tower here. This game might be a stomp, but... It goes to show you the viability of this Bammy Cinder. Maybe it caused me to take some tower shots from least in there, since I wasn't hitting him, but the Bammy's was. But other than that, it's pretty good. These two together makes it probably the best wave clear potential you could have as Wukong if you're going to AD. If you want AP, I guess you can go Runic Echoes like I did in my AP jungle video, but yeah, you get the idea. But anyway, first tower money coming through. That is huge. This game is uh, definitely over for top lane. See, so, yeah, let's go back here, get ourselves that finished Sunfire Cape, get ourselves boots, probably run it down bottom lane and mess these people up. 
And on the way there, on the way there, I'll get the refillable and the control ward here too. I think refillable actually might be a little bit too, a little too late. I don't think I need that. Do I get the control ward? Vision's good. I like vision. Vision is sight. Sight is knowledge, and knowledge is power. And I'm all about that power, baby. But yeah, when this hits live servers, for those of you who haven't heard me talk about this before, I'll just kind of briefly talk about it again, because I kind of beat it to death. But some of you, you know, this might be your first video of mine you're watching, so I'll go ahead and just talk about it a little bit. But, you know, Wukong's been garbage for years, so I want to, now that the rework is going to be good, I want to make a lot of Wukong-related uh, content. And some of that includes a Wukong climb all the way up the ranks, probably hitting diamond on that account with Wukong only. I'll probably do some stuff on my main too, my main account, instead of just a Wukong only account. But even on my main, I'll mostly be playing Wukong, honestly. I love this character so much now with these changes. It's kind of strange though, there's a bug right now where our W can go over walls, but it often doesn't. In fact, it usually doesn't. Like right there. Like why would that knock over walls? Yeah, some of these things are a mystery. Anyway, we're just going to blow you up. Spin, spin, spin. We'll spin again. Yeah, a little bit of a stomp, but you know what? I'm just going to try and end it quickly for you guys since I already have footage from the other game. And it was stompy too, but I wasn't able to do as much. And this one I'm able to do a lot more. Oh, oh I actually landed on the trap. Yikes. I think I still kill her here no matter what though. Yeah. I'm just so fed, and I'm pretty tanky. And the beautiful thing about this build that I want to emphasize toward you guys and why it's working is, yeah, you know what? This doesn't give me much as far as damage output, but it's because I can rely on this to do all the work for me. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear my phone vibrating or someone's calling me, but I'm just kind of in the middle of this, so I have to kind of let that go to voicemail. This is kind of risky what I'm doing here, but I'm pretty sure I can actually get away with it because she's going to get her tower shots if she hits me, which is exactly what happened there. I have no mana, but uh, if I can just push this wave in, if she sticks around, she's going to die because now I have the mana. Yep. I probably didn't need to ignite there, but in case she flashed, I wanted to be prepared. But did she flash earlier? I honestly can't remember. Oh well. Short-term memory loss, but... <laughs> Still enough of, uh, I guess, improvisation available. Riven Rage? Probably. That's my guess. Oh, oh I missed the siege. Alright, now I'm raging. Alrighty. Now, I think I'm just gonna push a bit more top lane, then I'll probably just go back to base and go with bottom lane or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to end this game quickly for you guys, but I want to entertain you guys along the way and talk about stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a smurf series this season, you guys, as soon as I'm out of school, where I will climb from iron to diamond with a variety. Variety being in big bold letters, underlined, all that stuff. But then I'll do a Wukong only series, and I'll probably make those videos into compilations, and then I'll also do some main account stuff where I'm doing queue with people, looking to win as much as possible and being pretty tryhard, but also having fun with it, because of course, you know, I'm a friendly guy and I like having fun with my friends. But in the same moment, I like winning. Good one, Lee Sin. Oh, actually, Red's right, I have Bammies. Or a uh, Sunfire. I'm gonna take tower shots if I play like that. Oh, I thought I juked it. Guess not. Alright, I'm probably dead. Yeah, there's like no escaping this one. Alright, the shutdown happens. I mean, I could have tried to fight him, to, to be honest, but I don't think I was going to ever going to work, so... I'll accept the circumstances on that one. I'll get ninjas, though, because their team, although they have Diana, it's pretty physical damage. So ninjas are good. And uh, I'll go Black Cleaver. Actually, nah, let's go Black Cleaver. I was going to do a Triforce video, but I think that's a whole other theme. Black Cleaver is like a nice supplement item, but it's never really the core item. I mean, it kind of is a core item for Wukong, but... I don't know how to explain it. I guess I should I should rephrase it. Not, it's not about being core. It's like being unique, special. Like you can have any build as Wukong. A Black Cleaver will always work. Whether it's Lethality, whether it's Tank, whether it's Bruiser, Attack Speed, it doesn't matter. Black Cleaver is always good for Wukong. Triforce is kind of niche, right? Sunfire is niche. That's probably the word I'm looking for. Niche. Alright, grab those last hits and I'll just keep pushing here. I was going to go bottom lane to get that tower gold, but the tower already got taken out, so that's all good. Oh yeah, there's a control ward here. Thanks, Lee Sin. 
One thing I really like with these changes that they've done for Wukong is they made it so that your Q it scales the attack speed. And it should have always done that because it's an auto attack, right? It's an empowered auto attack. So it should always scale the attack speed because attack, uh, auto attack scaled the attack speed, right? It just seems kind of obvious, but it didn't. So it always felt a little bit clunky, but yeah, I didn't really notice it until I started playing with the rework and I realized, wow, like this feels so much better because that's something they added to it. Now I should be able to hop this wall, but I can't. And that's really annoying. I'm just gonna spin at them all. <laughs> Can I take them all on? Probably not, but can I get to my teammates? Hell yeah. This is why I love the Sunfire build. I'm just so tanky, dude, and I do so much damage because my Nimbus Strike doesn't scale with anything I'm actually building. Right, I'm AD. And I have high base damage because I increase Wukong's base damage on his Q. And the Sunfire Cape has this new thing, right, where after you mobilize somebody, you spread this huge Fire Nova thing, right? You can see it. It works. It does some good stuff. Yeah, I'm just super fed, and that's a huge component to all this. If I'm being completely honest, right? But, like, I do think this is pretty decent. Are there better things? Probably. In most situations, yeah. But in some situations, this could actually be the best build. Right, if you're against an AD threat, and you're fighting pretty consistent, yeah, it's just kind of how it goes. Right, I'm just going to put my phone in my lap. Somebody keeps calling me here. Alright. Got the Black Cleaver. We'll get extra Ruby Crystal here. Alright. I feel like we can just run it down mid here and go for the win. Again, I hate the fact that this is a 5v4. It's a, really, it's a huge stomp, but this is the best I can do Never while it's on the PB. Again, once it hits live, uh, a lot of things are going to get better, I would say, as far as content goes. Since Wukong will actually be a real champion. I will kind of miss him being bad, though. I mean, he's still kind of bad. Right, because this rework, it's a huge band-aid, but there's still a wound underneath, they're not really fixing. I wish they would do a full-on VGU, full update. This is just a bunch of buffs, honestly, but I do like it. Having two alts feels pretty great. Having a decoy that does something, instead of being useless, feels pretty great. The Q's numbers being fixed? Sure. Great. Oh, please. Come here, Caitlyn. I'm just gonna alt for the move speed. There it is. Get one, Lisa. But it ain't enough. Come at me, boy. Alright, so that will be the, the FF. But I got to 10-1, so there you go. That's the game here today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop that rating. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on with that bell. All that good stuff. Since I guess I don't upload often enough for YouTube to always notify you with the sub box. So notification bell can help. And don't forget to subscribe, of course. And as far as uh, all this goes, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Sir Poop the Second. It's a funny name. Really? Only an S? Not an S plus? Really? <laughs> I'm not salty. I'm just really surprised of all things, to be honest. But hey, there you go. There is the Wukong rework with the Sunfire Cape build. I think this build's really great. So what have we covered? I've covered a standard build in the jungle with the rework when it was first put out. I've put out the AP stuff because the AD, or so the AP ratio on his E was really fun, and it still is. Uh, I've done some sustained stuff since being a fighter and rock and conquer can work really well But I think that builds a little bit niche too niche to a point that it's probably not great. This builds a lot better I think I still want to put out some stuff showing you guys how good lethality can be because I think lethality is pretty good Still all things considered like it's as good as other champions with lethality Whereas before it was the only build that was good for Wukong because it was really good But it was only good at being what a lethality build should be and that is for killing squishies against tanks it sucked Whereas now, it's actually better against tank school lethality than it was currently on live servers, so that's something to consider. I think I would also like to do a uh, Yumi support sort of synergy bottom lane video where I play Wukong bottom and go crit or something. That'd be fun. We'll have to see if I can cook that up for you guys. But that is it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do to support the video. I'd really appreciate it. I'll show you guys the damage stats and stuff. But this is pretty much you know, all that. I think last stand is really good if you're going tanky. If you're going burst with electrocute go coop conquer last stand is kind of a good combo not conquer electrocute instead coop is the one you want here tenacity amazing i love that and we already checked that out how much damage did i take i took the third most only died once i could have been like this guy never died at all wait he was going to attack speed strange that can sort of work anyway i'm not here to talk about that guy that's the video here today guys hope you enjoyed it once again i'll catch you on the next one peace out